Okay. We're back. And without nearly so many weather effects, our computer is not chugging along. Okay. Okay, so is this is on now? I don't... It's still got all the little green lights. Okay. <laughs> Hi! Hi! Who's that? Hello? Who was that? No, who was that? That was a person. You saw that. Living quarters. Hello? This is a nice place. We got wooden paneling and everybody's got their own locker. This could be a lot worse. It's David... David Burka. Locked. The poor man. He's named after a woman's garment. L. Ferguson. Locked. Uh, in Hanson. Ah! Butt plugs. I knew it. No, wait. Oh, they're little men. Oh, okay. It's a... Uh, it's... It's Aang, the Avatar, the later years. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna put that back. Are those goggles? Can I have those? No? Okay. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? That's a good question. It means he's in the building. You probably just saw him. He left his collection of butt plugs in his locker. The man has no shame. Johan DeWitt. It's locked. Okay, Ned Will. No butt plugs in here. Ah! Little radio. Walkie talkie. Len Brown. Locked. How did he get into his locker? There's boxes in front of it. Uh, H. Anderson. Aha. Uh, Nikolai Gogol, the portrait. Okay. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? Uh, C. Lenning. Hmm. Locked. James Barlow. Hmm. It's locked. No women here at all. Kind of strange. Then again, if this takes place in the 30s, I guess there wouldn't be any out here. I don't know. Maybe the next time I see a letter or something, I'll check the, the, uh, the date. Crew rooms. Yeah. If that guy's got butt plugs, he might have porn mags, too. Let's go... What was that? Hello? Doors open outward. Oh, well, this is nice! I was afraid it'd be just like a tiny little closet room, but... Yeah, there's plenty of room in here. You could do exercises and put some bikini posters on the walls. They got freaking fire extinguishers everywhere, I tell ya. Okay. Ah. This picture has been torn and put back together, though. Look at that line. Nothing on the back? Okay. I'm always wary of games that let me look at the backs of things, because somewhere there's gonna be one that has, like, a code or a password or something on it. Here's his goggles. So he didn't leave. Okay, close. Ah, his diary. Uh, 1949. I was close. Uh, these nightmares have become unbearable. I still see the same man in my nocturnal visions, but now he is holding something in his hand, which I believe to be a lotus flower. We seem to be continuing this grave and serious conversation again and again, but I still can't remember the contents. During work hours, sometimes I hear his voice through the radio. It is not in a form of meaningful sentences, but more like some unconscious mutterings. I'm afraid to tell anyone about this, for I hate the very idea of the suspension I will probably be facing. Interesting.
Interesting. Okay. Can we turn this on? Nope. Well, apparently not. It's not attached to anything. There's... Oh. Okay, there's there's a halogen light. But all right. How about this one? Hello? Surprise inspection, butt munch. Here's his coat. Where is he? Animal Crossing New Horizons, eat your heart out. This is pretty. Okay. Oh, another picture of a kid. Yep, yep, everybody's got kids. That didn't have any backing on it. What were you supposed to do with it? You couldn't set it up or put it on a wall. Uh, sketch, Ugh. okay. Uh, one of the composite sculptures we've come across during our initial field trips, it has an open third eye on its forehead as well as an in as well as inside its hand, which I think indicates some kind of state of knowing because allusions to knowledge and elder things, I was right, recur all the time in almost every base relief we have discovered so far. They've already named them elder things. All this leads me to believe that these creatures inhabiting these halls have acquired some kind of knowledge from the Elder Things, fabled creatures of primal myths. Interesting. Oh, you have obtained a trophy item. Okay. So he's our artist. He left his goggles too. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to find all the... Uh, Got a carpet stain here, buddy. Oh, it's... He, he spilled it. Weird. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to find every trophy item or anything. There's no point in doing that, but I'm, I'll do my best. How about that? Okay. I feel like we should have, like, little plaques so I can see whose room is whose, you know? Well, I better leave that open, just so I know I've been in there. Okay. Uh, hello? You have a picture of your kid here? Oh, yep, sure enough. <laughs> He's adorable. Okay. Oh, yep. Gonna be a soccer kid. I was a soccer kid. I played for two seasons. One season we went non-defeat, and then the second season we went defeat. Ugh. I'll just put that back. Wait, is that like my gloves? Yes, it is. Except it doesn't have the nice Rolex on the back. Interesting. Okay. We got a key. What's it for? John DeWitt. Oh, I bet that goes to his locker. That's good. That's good. And some clothes. Er, looks to be sketch pads, but apparently I'm not interested in them. Here is his coat. Where is he? Okay. I'm just rooting through everybody's shit. They're sitting in the commissary wondering what the hell I'm doing while they watch me on the security cameras. <laughs> More of these gloves. Ah, oh, somebody's dad, brother, uncle, something. Okay. Ah. I'm inclined more towards the notion that our nocturnal visions are not just faint and fantastic reflections of our waking experiences. Every time I pass into a state of dormancy, somehow I can explore, while I'm dreaming, the vistas of grandeur, an alien prospect in unnatural disposition so vividly expressing the outer extent of this world I have yet to discover. If only I was endowed with the artistic skill to describe my visions. All I know is that all I know is that all this became evident after the Canarium sessions had started. I guess that's the name of that device. Uh, even though I am not one of the participants, I am somehow affected. I feel I am absorbed. 
while in an unconscious state into the oblivion, crossing the line beyond the wall of sleep. I want some of whatever this guy's having. <laughs> L. Ferguson. Okay, I'm glad I'm keeping everything, so I don't have to come back and look at this twice. Some of my favorite games, like Dark Fall, The Journal, and stuff, you, you have to go back and see stuff if you want to see it again. You don't take anything with you. This game is much more convenient. Nothing. He's doing laundry. None of his clothes are here. Where's the laundry room? Two more. Locked. 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 Okay. Well, all right. Let's see. Painkillers. And I'm gonna guess that's peroxide, aspirin, something contact sensitive to light. I saw that. Did you see that? It kind of flickered there for a second. That might have been a graphical thing. Sorry. I'm suspicious of everything right now because freaking. It's freaking Lovecraft. <laughs> Nothing is what it seems. Okay, so we went through everybody's shit. Let's go back to the locker room. Private rooms. Crew rooms and private rooms. Maybe the captain or whatever. He's back there. So so which which one was it? Johan DeWitt. That is this one. Do you keep butt plugs in your locker? Ah! Oh. oh. Just one. The man, he has simple needs. He only has one. I found a note about a mental problem. I've noticed a very curious and dangerous development in the psychological condition of the whole crew that compels me to record this note as an initial diagnosis report. Uh, the problem is especially intense for three subjects. Dr. Barlow, Dr. Anderson, and Frank Gilman. Why is this frigazying out? Uh, whom I have been inspecting closely since the onset during... Since the onset of their psychological degradation. Well, you locked them in a room and gave them shamanic flower incense. What did you think was going to happen when you hooked them up to an alien radio? Uh, during the past two nights, the aforementioned subjects awoke screaming in their beds, thus affecting and demoralizing all of the crew members. Understandable. When I spoke to them personally, I noticed some serious deviations in their behavior patterns. They're acting weird. As the time progressed, I noticed... I noted deep changes in their mental conditions. When really pushed, they clearly started to behave like someone else, which led me to believe that I was facing some sort of multiple personality disorder, but it is too early to draw any conclusions. That's a big leap, and that takes a lot of testing. Uh, other subjects are not too far a cry from their normal personalities, but the difference is, of course, obvious. Uh, their condition is getting way worse day by day, and a serious medical examination is needed to be carried out on everybody displaying such symptoms. Well, we are trapped in the Antarctic inspecting lizard people ruins who worshipped freaking elder things. So yeah, everybody's a little on edge, doctor. <laughs> I informed Dr. Faust, well, that was the guy in our dream, and warned him about the consequences. He looked worried, but nevertheless hasn't mentioned it to me since. With the weather conditions we have been having lately, it seems extremely unlikely that we shall receive professional help from the outside world or will be able to send anybody away for a thorough medical examination, which is the only sane thing to do under the circumstances. Yeah, you guys are caught under a two-week storm, and you don't exactly have Dr. Troy here to help everybody. Okay. If his coat is just right here... Where, Where is, is he, he now? <laughs> uh, I gotta love canned dialogue. Well, okay. Um, I guess we will go to the private rooms then. Hello? Shadow Man? More of those shaman plants. Oh, 
they got a bunch. Did you guys grab these from the lizard people ruins that you were... What is that? Do you guys hear that? It's like a squeaky sound. I bet that's the weather outside, actually. It just... <laughs> Did you guys grab these from the lizard people ruins? Because, like, these wouldn't be like this if they needed sunshine, because there's no sunshine here. Oh. Hello. What is this? Doesn't want me to click on it, but it's ob it's awful different than the rest of the ceiling. Yeah, the, that goes there. Well, at least I know we're reinforced in here. We don't have to worry about a draft. Uh, MC Blake. He's the real MC. Oh, his room is way better than mine. Dang. Hello? He's got a bunch of books. Can I kneel? No, I can't. Oh, he's got a toolbox. Nope. Don't want that. I found a note explaining the purpose of the expedition. Ah, okay, so... July, July 23rd, 1941. I know we are close to what we had been looking for. During the adaptation sessions we hold here in the meeting room, I feel a guidance of some sort. Oh, goody. Something pointing towards the destination we seek. This could mean we are now in sync with the ancient source. Ooh. I came into this way late then. They are probably all gone by now. Uh, the wearable conarium we're carrying on our left arms. Oh, that's what my glove is. Uh, connects and thus receives sensations from the same ancient source. And sometimes I wonder whether there has ever been another soul during humanity's relatively brief period of existence who was able to achieve such a feat. Uh, with some shunned and elusive sources I have gathered from around the world, it's said that the extraterrestrial species, the Elder Thing race, built it after passing through a stage of mechanized life on other planets. What sources are you talking about? Just about everybody here is a doctor. What? I'd like to see your scholarly sources. Wikipedia does not count. Elder Things became mechanized life? They turned into robots? What are you talking about? What's this? Is this my answering machine? Oh. Oh, what did I turn on? Please tell me there's not a bird in there. It's stuck. Please tell me there's not a bird in there. Huh. I don't know what I'm... I don't know what I'm doing. Let's try something else. Is that a crowbar? Nope. Found an object that looks like a handle. It's a brain. Uh, it's it's dark. Let me read it. Uh, scientifically, the the pineal gland, also known as the pineal body, canarium, and epiphysis cerebri, is a small endocrine gland, and the vertebrae brain named after its shape, which resembles that of a pine cone. It's located between the blah blah center of the brain between the two hemispheres. The pineal gland produces melatonin, a serotonin divided hormone which modulates sleep patterns. But mystic traditions and philosophy ascribe it to a different role. Rene Descartes regarded it as the principal seat of the soul and the place in which all of our thoughts are formed. And in the writings of Madame Blavatsky, it was explained with the Hindu concept of the third eye, or the Anji Chakra. As a part of the human body not fully understood today in the 50s or 40s, uh, it holds a deep-rooted place as one of the most important links between our material and the continually degrading mystic nature. 
You don't say. Oh, it's a trophy item. Okay. Hidden plants of the of great antiquity. Okay. Anything I. Uh... Uh, 